إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله ثم أما بعد قرن الله سبحانه وتعالى العلم باسمه سبحانه وتعالى وبالملائكة بأنه سبحانه وتعالى قائما بالقسط بالعدل الله سبحانه وتعالى قال شهد الله أنه لا إله إلا هو والملائكة وأولو العلم قائما بالقسط الله سبحانه وتعالى joined knowledge with his name himself and the angels that he is establishing justice and dealing with justice. If there is anything to be more important than seeking knowledge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have included it. When you have something connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in such a powerful ayah, qa'im and bilqist, justice, absolute justice between Muslim and non-Muslim, obedient, disobedient, male, female, even animals. And he put knowledgeable people with his testimony to show how important and how valuable people of knowledge are and how important seeking knowledge is, and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qal fi sha'n al-ulama fi surat Fatir innama yakhsha Allah min ibadihi al-ulama if anyone were to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to adhere to the command and to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and yani to, to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no one would be more than people of knowledge and that's why the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam also said man fi al hadith that that refers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loving people man arada Allah bihi khayran yufaqihhu fi din if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants goodness for you he will make you knowledgeable in religion so المؤمن أو الإنسان يؤتى عادة من طريقين طريق الشبهات وطريق الشهوات If you were to deviate you are attacked from two main paths شهوات desires, whims and desires and شبهات doubtful issues and that is the most dangerous one when someone comes and makes you doubt your religion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unjust. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did this to the man and did not do that to the woman? That's how people, they come to weak believers and they inject this poison in them because they don't have much knowledge. So they start going, yeah, really. So doubtful issues, the cure for it, knowledge. If you know, It'll be easy for you to retaliate and answer and defend and understand. Shahawat is to adhere to the command, taqwa. You desire something, you know this is haram. And who made it haram? The one who created you, the one who made you enjoy it. He can easily take that enjoyment out of you and make you a miserable person that you cannot even do it. You see, we, we, we don't think this way. Yani astaghfirullah, a, a person who is, uh, doesn't care, not married, and wants to just go mess around and fool around, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to make him unable to even desire women. So, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and adhere, all of these desires will go away. Have knowledge, the doubtful issues will go away and you will be on the straight path. Imam Malik, rahimahullah, you know Imam Malik, brother, right? I heard his name. 
He came before Abu Hanifa, true or false? False. False, Ahsant. So far, so good. He's paying attention, mashallah. Imam Abu Hanifa first, Imam Malik second, Imam Shafi'i third, Imam Ahmad fourth. Imam Malik, Ja'a Rajulun ila Imam Malik, Fakal, Uridu an Unabirak. فقال له أنا على يقين من أمري لا حاجة لي. A man came to debate with Imam Malik. So Imam Malik told him, I am relaxed and with surety of what I believe in. Meaning, I'm not seeking, I'm not looking for other path or other religion. I am comfortable. With knowledge on what I have, there's no need for me to debate you. قال يعني أصر على المناظرة. He insisted. He wants to debate with him. قال الإمام مالك قال طيب فإن غلبتك if I win if I beat you قال أتبعك then I follow you. I believe in what you believe. قال فإن غلبتني and if I beat you if you beat me قال تتبعني you follow me he said now assume one beat the other now both of them on the same path صح قال فإن جاء ثالث وغلبنا قال نتبعه he said if a third person came and he debated with us and he won. He said both of us would follow him. قال إذن لا خير في دين يكثر به التنقل لا خير في دين يكثر به التنقل He said then there is no goodness in faith that you keep jumping from one place to another Today you meet this person, you follow him. Then another person comes and talks to you, you follow him. There is no goodness in that. And what is the solution to this? It is to be on yaqeen, on what you know. And you can never ever get close to yaqeen without knowledge. You can fly to the moon, you can go to another country, you can do whatever you can sit 24 7 make dua you will not get to yaqeen without knowledge yaqeen comes with faith wa'bud rabbaka hatta ya'tiyaka al-yaqeen ibada an tariq al-fihm wal-'ilm wal-'amal you worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala based on exactly what he wants and the way he wants and you act upon that and the best of ibadah after the obligation is what? Seeking knowledge. Sit 5, 10, 15 minutes here, it's better than your whole night qiyam. Better than all of your extra sunan. Because this is what gets you to the real sunnah and real action and the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes it. This is the halaqa of dhikr that the Prophet ﷺ told us, angels descend from earth to the sky with tranquility. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala surrounds you and pours on you the mercy. And he even talks about you with the elite of his uh, angels. So subhanallah, this is unbelievably rewarding. Yani, uh, when you pray with her, when you pray with her, it's supposed to be the end of the night, right? And it's better before Fajr. Because those people who do Qiyam will do that. Tayyib. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell Abu Huraira radiallahu an to not sleep before he prays with her, if with her is the best uh, before Fajr? Ulama qalu, لأنه كان مشغولا في جمع الحديث يعني كان يطلب علم فكان يصهر والله أعلم فيصعب عليه قيام الليل قبل الفجر فيعني فتح له المجال الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم يعني he used to stay late at night 
because he is number one in collecting hadith. And if you stay late, it's hard for you to wake up before Fajr. So more than likely, he would do his Qiyam before he sleeps. And he made sure to tell him to do the Witr because he might not wake up before Fajr. That is the only reason that the Prophet ﷺ told us after Isha, what do you do? You go to sleep. Unless you're seeking knowledge. And there is yani, important issues or something. But usually the Sunnah is after Isha, you go to sleep. But if you are seeking knowledge, it is so rewarding. So this is my advice to you. Always, always make sure that every opportunity of seeking knowledge, regardless how small, it can be an ayah. Look at the Prophet ﷺ told the companions, لَأَنْ يَغْدُوا أَحَدُكُمْ إِلَى الْمَسْجِدِ فَيُعَلِّمْ آيَةً أَوْ يَتَعَلَّمْ آيَةً خَيْرٌ لَهُ مِنْ كَذَا يعني مِنْ الْإِبِلِ الَّتِي يعني يَرْغَبْ فِيهَا الصَّحَابَ رضي الله عنه. He encouraged the Sahaba, he said, if you go to the masjid and you learn one ayah or you teach one ayah, it's better for you than one of the best of the camels that people desire so much at that time. And he said, and if you learn or teach two, then two camels, three, then three camels, and the number goes on. This is how uh, you, you, you feel good when you worship and you feel good when you talk, and you feel good when someone wants to even ridicule you or make fun of you or attack your religion. It gives you patience. It gives you a natural uh, good feeling that يعني, you are ala ilm, ala ilm min deenik. يعني, even la ilaha illallah. Fa'lam, fa'lam annahu la ilaha illallah. It's not like la ilaha illallah, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu akbar, la ilaha illallah. You have to know what you're saying. You have to know what you're doing. Yani, uh, sometimes it comes to my mind, you do ikama for the salah. Do you know what it means? How can you make ikama for something and you repeat something? All we need is, oh, when I hear that, that means salah. When I hear this one, oh, it means someone died. When I hear, you know what you are becoming like? Yani, I, I hate to compare this. يعني الله سبحانه وتعالى قال ومثل الذين كفروا كمثل الذي ينعق بما لا يسمع إلا دعاء ونداء الله سبحانه وتعالى compared the disbelievers with cattle in what he said they are like cattle all they do is they repeat and they do the act without Understanding, that's why he concluded Blind, deaf, dumb and ignorant They don't comprehend, they don't return So make sure, don't put yourself in a position Where you don't know what you're doing I'm not saying learn Arabic and be an expert on it And I'm not addressing non-Arab I'm addressing those particular Arab who repeat the ayat And, and they still don't know because all of that Yani I, myself, the thing that I teach you, I probably, every time I teach it, every time I say it, I look it and I read it and I search it and I do, it's not something that I come and just uh, start talking to you all, it's so easy for me because I've been doing it for so, it's not. Because you, you really have to. So when you come and you make the adhan, you need to know what the adhan is. And you need to know the conditions for it. And you need to know the one with the good voice is the one who's supposed to do it. And you need to know iqama. What is iqama? What are you saying? And you need to know what at tahiyyat means, what al-fatiha means, what subhan rabbi al-azim, subhan rabbi al-a'la. I don't see and imagine someone in consistently doing the same thing for years and years and not thinking about what he's saying or she's saying. It's so hard to really comprehend it. This is... Yani, yani, you know, you know what it, it sounds like? It sounds like someone comes and delivers a khutbah without preparation and just comes and delivers anything. This is an insult. Wallahi al-Azim, it's an insult to the people who are sitting and listening to them. Who are you talking to? You're just basically belittling everyone sitting there that you don't need to prepare. Anything will pass on them. Even if it is so that some people are there, respect the place that you are sitting in. Respect the one that you are talking about, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Respect knowledge itself. 
So anything you do, you have to follow the hadith. Man, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal, inna allaha yuhibbu idha amila ahadukum amila an yutkuna. Perfect your work, whatever it is. You want to give a khatra, perfect it. You want to read an ayah, perfect it. You want to lead the prayer, perfect it. Don't put yourself in a position simply because you get so much hasanat. Hasanat is not just uh, you go with a shovel and you just take it to anyone. Hasanat is based on how hard did you work for that particular act to gain it. You're not going to come and just uh, stutter two, three ayah and beat me that I have been practicing for 10, 20, 30, 50 years doing the same thing and you say, oh, the Prophet ﷺ said, if you can read properly, you get double reward. Well, you get double rewards, I get a billion rewards. Yani, but we, we have to understand. It's not like uh, he is sitting here half an hour before the salah and you come the last minute and you shove yourself and you come in the first line and you say, oh, Alhamdulillah, I pray in the first line. Or just like some people do in uh, Jumu'ah. They come the end and they come and push and they take a stand somewhere and they kind of sneak in there. Well, who are you playing with? Wallah al who are you playing with? Well, someone, when someone dies, you go and they revive, they come to you, make sure if they say, who's Rabbak, you tell them, this ignorance, you're cheating on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's like this is an exam and you want to give him the answers for the questions as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is busy doing something else and he's not there. Sometimes when we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're actually belittling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, belittling his knowledge, belittling his uh, supervision, belittling his power, belittling his uh, being the all saneer, all basir, all of those. Why we do that? Because we don't have knowledge. Seek knowledge, ya ikhwan. Take advantage of your life. Wallahi al-Azim, if you dedicate little, little, 10, 15 minutes, or dedicate, Wallahi, I'm going to tell you about myself. Wallahi, what puts me in this position? Fadlillah, alhamdulillah, after Isha, sitting after Isha, listening to 10, 15 minutes khatira. Center Mr. Sheikh Mu'taz, Allah sahil alayhi. That's what really got me into going after it, where I dropped my education that I was seeking, engineering, I, 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 I want to throw up when I just think about finishing, even though I had one year left. Why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took the love of this out of my heart. It's like I cannot, I, I planned, I went, I signed, I did everything. But when I just sit and I go, uh, sit and I go sitting uh, at night studying, uh, when am I going to review the Quran? When am I going uh, to? I cannot. But my point is, what got me this is that 10, 15 minute that I became consistent on. And if you are consistent on it for a while and you haven't improved, then you're making it like a habit. You're not thinking because it should make you move to a higher level. And when, when you all sit here for a year or two years and you're still sitting and you're not moving anywhere, there is an effect too. Yeah, alhamdulillah, you're getting the hasanat and you're getting that. But I'm not saying sit here or become an imam. I'm saying like when you go home, do you really talk with your friends? Do you really talk with your parents, with your children? Do you try to make a talk when you are sitting in a gathering and nobody is doing anything? Do you step forward or you say, ah, I'm not a sheikh? Yani, what are you? Am I supposed to say, oh, mashallah, mashallah, he's not a sheikh. What a, what, yani, what a, what a title. I want to be like him. You're insulting yourself when you say I'm not a sheikh. Why not you're not a sheikh? What are you doing here? You need to be a sheikh. At least be quiet. But when you say I'm not a sheikh, did I say you're a sheikh? Did I ask you for a fatwa? Did I ask you? You know, sometimes I come and shake his hand and say, how are you, Sheikh? I'm not a Sheikh. And sometimes it comes from people who have knowledge. They think that they're humble when they do that. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika, shalwa la ilaha 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 ilaha